All right, Adam, it's uh, Super Bowl Sunday, and for that reason, especially, nobody cares that we're doing this, and I say Super Bowl because our podcast gets about 50 views right now, so I'm sure the NFL doesn't care. Uh, with that, welcome to the Automotive Misconduct Podcast. I am your host, Dustin. And I'm Adam, glad to have you. So Adam, uh, yesterday, along with our friend Justin, we we're at your house polishing on your car yeah decided to get the little auto autorama prep uh it's kind of like one of the first weekends that we've had available together kind of scheduling wise yeah and it's been the nicest weekend in a while weather wise for sure man such a teaser i am so ready for spring (laughs) oh yeah aren't we all Yeah. yeah we got uh justin brought over some stuff and i had never even took a buffer to a car, so it was kind of new to me. I was kind of worried about, yeah. you know, just how the paint was 22 years old, and, you know, I hadn't, I didn't know what to look for, as in, like, condition of paint, like, trying not to burn through, you know, I didn't know how deep the clear went, so Justin was nice enough to come hang out with us anyway, and had a little fun doing it. Brought, stole my, yeah. stole my daughter's TV out there, you know, I had to bring it out watch the Wings game, you know? Right. Yeah, that was exciting. Uh, I as I was so distracted during the whole thing. The good thing uh, Justin was able to pay attention and get things done. You know, like you're saying, I, I I've never polished that hard on a car before, and and like you, that does scare me a little bit. Like burning through the clear and into the paint and all that. And I I think that's kind of what it what has kept me from doing so. But uh, I was really um, surprised, I guess, by realistically how simple it is Mm -hmm. compared to how intimidating it is before you've ever done it before. Like, now I feel like I'd be comfortable at least giving it a shot on something even even halfway halfway decent. Mm -hmm. I I don't know if I'd necessarily be ready to do it on my car yet, but, you know, maybe on the Crown Vic or something, right? You know, like, how bad could you screw that up right but it is say surprisingly simple for how intimidating it was and justin knows what he's doing and and did an excellent job mm-hmm. so it was really uh it was fun to be a part of and hang out with you guys so yeah uh glad we got to do it for sure oh, yeah man it was just something they had to get done i mean i was scared to do it i'm glad he was his expertise kind of led the way but like you said i mean i feel a lot more comfortable now uh, after after mm-hmm. watching it being done, um, I wouldn't be afraid to do it on any of the vehicles that I own. Just, you know, right. I mean, making sure you don't grab the wrong bottle of polish versus cut right. and do half the car in the wrong yeah. the wrong compound. But, you know, only yeah, keep I'd up Yeah, I definitely still have to do some Googling. <laughs> oh, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, you know, just uh, I need to have this pad and this <laughs> compound and, and all that. Like you said, I mean before that i've put a coat of wax on something but i mean that was the (laughs) you know the final part or whatever so very impressed on how it turned out for sure yeah i mean after talking with justin and you know he told us both like how good of condition the paint was in to begin with you know and we were all kind of like i don't know what good is versus bad i mean i see scratches and dents and dings and but ultimately, he said it was mm-hmm. in decent shape, so it made his job a little easier. But you know, yeah. it was definitely a learning process. I mean, something that we think we could all all took away something from that for sure. Mm-hmm. It turned, turned out great. Um, I mean, clay bar. You know, like just the whole process of you know step by step. I mean, it was good. It turned out right. great. It turned out super good, man. Like, it's hard to believe that paint is 22 years old. Like, it is for the life that it lived, you know, going through mission yeah. owners as, you know, Tony's daily driver to living under a cover in his grandpa's barn to you know, all this stuff. I mean, yeah, the bat the problem, bat, yeah, the bat problem. <laughs> but I mean, <laughs> turned out really good. I can't thank you guys enough for coming over and, you know, helping me out with that. Oh yeah. It was, it was a good, I think that's the first time I've seen Justin in person in well over a year. Oh anyways. yeah, for sure just the way everything's been going so it was good to reconnect and whatnot um 
what what I drove out there was my loner vehicle. Uh. And this is this is not against the dealership in any way, shape, or form. Like loaner cars are what they mm-hmm. are, and they have to use the cheapest ones because people put miles on them. And but my loaner was a twenty-four Jeep Renegade, and uh. this thing rough wow like <laughs> yeah you know I, i'm used for sure i'm used to the ls engine sewing machine sound that you get from camshafts but holy hell mm-hmm. the amount of chatter that comes from the engine like mm-hmm. this thing is it is struggling to live in that renegade yeah it's shocking <laughs> the amount of noise from the engine bay on that little four cylinder and it, it's as you can tell, it's not a, it's not a good noise in oh, any way, yeah, shape, yeah. or form, right? Is is what what I'm saying. It's not enjoyable no. or, or anything. It's just racket. It was not a, like, like like you know, I know when you is. let your pipe sing. You know, it's like not like the song of my people. Right. It's like holy crap, this thing is sounding unhealthy. Um, almost like there's like marbles floating around in the cylinder head, like just like right. clatter. It's not even a good noise. It is a clatter. No. No, and it, it's got a, a nine-speed transmission in it. And I, for the life of me, I can't figure out why. For one, it won't let you even... It's got that auto stick mm-hmm. feature, right? It won't let you engage ninth gear until the speedometer reads at least 60. And then I've even had it when I was on the expressway mm-hmm. by your house going... You know, mm-hmm. a couple miles an hour over. Like even at that high speed, it, it yeah, it was like lugging. Like yeah. it, 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 like it didn't have the power to even, you know, accelerate past that. So it's really, it's really strange that they put that transmission in it because it just doesn't seem to match as far as I'm concerned. The thing is, like it's a high, it's a high enough overdrive right. that the car like struggles to even maintain. What shocked me the most was when I saw the average fuel economy in that thing. Yes. 20. 20. In a little four-cylinder in... matchbox Jeep. 20. Right. Like, that is absolutely, yeah. to me, that is unacceptable in that, that type yes. of vehicle. Yes. Like, it defeats the whole point. Like, like we were saying, it, it should be closer to 30. That's where I was like at. at a minimum. 26 to 30. At mi- 26 minimum. I, I was at 28 to 30 is kind yeah. of what I was expecting. Yeah. Like we talked about my old shadow on the previous episode. I remember distinctly that thing getting 26. Mm-hmm. Like all day long, all day, every day. So you're talking a car that was built 30 years ago and was a V6. And I was a early early 20s kid driving it so i wasn't nice to it right and that that thing got better mileage than this in 2024 i mean just in uh, perspective i mean my truck's a 2012 f-150 with a five liter and on the highway i can get 16 17 cruising 70 Mm -hmm. 75 i mean that just blows my mind that the mileage is that far Mm -hmm. off on that thing I mean, I see zero I re- zero reason to buy that unit, like zero. You could not that would no. not be a new vehicle that I purchased. No, I I routine routinely get eighteen mm-hmm. in my truck with the MDS and all that, and the Crown Vic routinely gets eighteen. Yeah. And I'm I'm not you know in my early twenties anymore, but I'm still not super nice oh, to no. either one of them all the time. Right. So I, you know, yeah, I, I don't I don't get my it. My truck's leveled on thirty threes, and it blows me away how hor- I mean, the, the comparison between our vehicles and that thing is just unreal. Yeah, strange. Yep. Well, anyway, uh, that's really all we got going on in our lives. So, as you can tell, if you've listened to one episode or more than one episode, we're still trying to kind of find our footing here in how we do these. So, I came up with the idea, let's dig up some automotive headlines 
and uh, let's see what we have to talk about. Mm -hmm. The one story I found is Apple, the phone company or the computer company or wh however you want to classify them, yeah. is testing their own self-driving car in California. Yeah. Hmm. So with them being like the technology company as they are, I guess it makes sense, but just kind of comes out of left field as far as I'm concerned about them building a car. Yeah. I, so I, like, I don't know. <laughs> you would you would think they would have to, I don't know, Man. hire a bunch of engineers from current <laughs> car companies. Like uh, stick, or whatever. stick like, to cell phones, dude, please. Right, yeah. Uh, As of right now, you guys are not equipped to build a car. They just now recently made it to where iPhone batteries didn't suck. <laughs> what are they gonna do about <laughs> right. car? Yeah. I mean, every what, what yeah. is it, like every two years, a new phone comes. Every year, a new phone comes out. Yeah. So I mean, and then when the old phone, like once the new phone comes out, the old phone battery. As soon as you do that yeah. update, like whether it be iOS, whatever, as soon as you do that update, it seemed like the battery life went extinct. So I think. Yeah. <laughs> I think I do that with these cars. Well, it. Right. Yeah. <laughs> like I. I I'm picking up what you're saying. Like, are they going to have planned obsolescence <laughs> yeah. with cars now? Like, it, it would only make sense. Right, are they going to have a one-year shelf life on these batteries that cost $30,000? <laughs> oh. oh, God. I mean, 100% would be whole... a lease option. Like, there would be no purchase. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> like, there's no way I'm yeah. buying one of those. <laughs> no. Yeah. Oh, wow. Oh, the, the EV world, dude, is absolutely insane. Like, this, I mean, not just yeah. EV, but just the technology that they're trying to throw at these things. I think you had mentioned something before about some dude driving a cyber truck with like some VR thing. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you gotta be yeah. shitting me, dude. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, I saw an article. Uh, where is it here? There's a, a video on Jalopnik yeah. of a guy driving <laughs> a cyber truck. While wearing the Apple Vision Pro uh, VR glasses, and it, like, is this the worst person alive? Oh. <laughs> is this the person you hate the most? Oh my God! I will take a left turn right there and tell you a small story. The other day, I was driving down the highway, coming home from work, and I saw a lady reading a book with the book and her steering wheel. And I'm not oh talking a Kindle or a... She had a freaking paperback book on her steering wheel reading. It. And I don't know about you. Oh, my God. But my attention span is not large enough to be able to read a book and drive. So you... No. Like, it's already bad enough we text oh. and drive. Like, it, like to where I, had oh to, I almost had to slow down and impede traffic so I could get back to this woman and take a picture. Like, it blew my mind that this lady was driving yeah. and reading a book. I was like, "What oh, the God. hell?" But oh. back to your EV stuff. Yeah. I, that just there was, well, that and I, and I, I'm going a little. There, there was a Top Gear segment where Clarkson was I was on the track with a uh, Clarkson was driving. Say their version is the Toyota over there, but over here it's the Scion. Mm -hmm. And he was driving on the track, reading a book, drifting it <laughs> around the track. But like it was just like demonstrating how easy it was to drift, and mm -hmm. it's you know due to the tiny tires that right. went on or whatever. But um, yeah, that was at least on a private airfield, right, in the middle of nowhere, Eng England. <laughs> not not on US, US one twenty seven. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. Anyway, back to the back to your deal. Like that, I don't know. I just had to throw that in there. Like that. That. Like one of those mind blown deals where you're like you had to like take a second to yes. come back like holy crap, does this woman have a book like, open? What did I just yes. see? <laughs> yeah. But back to that dude being an idiot driving with the VR set on his face when he's trying to. Oh my god. Yeah. Um, I have some friends at work that are uh, technology nerds, mm -hmm. and uh, they're t telling me about these things, and I'm pretty sure that they the ca camera on this these vr glasses mm -hmm. like moves with your eyes and like say points the camera lens like right. where you're looking yeah. and everything and 
as is with everything else on the internet, I'm sure that'll make its way to the uh, adult industry, we'll say. <laughs> but yeah. I can I can imagine like that being a thing on YouTube oh, yeah. like this summer. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if uh, track officials are going to be very ah. interested in people wearing these. Yeah. But I, you know what I mean. I could see some like epic like racing stuff with mm -hmm. them. But I don't know. We'll see where that goes. I know, like a lot. Not really my. A lot of drag strips actually outlawing the EV stuff and just in general, because they ha oh. they have no way to put a fire out if that lithium battery decides to combust. Yeah, and a, makes and a lot sense. of these local tracks. I mean, obviously you have your big tracks like Bradenton and Indy, you know, Enos, Texas, and all those right. big tracks. You know, they probably yeah could you know afford to pay for whatever mm -hmm. you know products they need and whatever equipment they need. But a lot of these local tracks, they're like, no, you know, yeah. the, you end up stuffing that thing in the wall at 150 and it combusts. We have no way to put that out and get you out of the car. So I know a lot of tracks yeah. are. Like, they put the kibosh to any EV vehicles even on track. That's interesting. I'll have to look that up on the Lapeer website and see if that's a thing there or not. <laughs> if yeah, not, maybe it will be in the future. I just remember seeing it. It was, like, last year I saw a, I can't remember which track it was posted about it, that they um, didn't want any more EV stuff on uh, on track just hmm. for that purpose. Yeah. I mean, you think about it, it is dangerous. I mean... You, you see yeah. these fires on those things. I mean, they catch fire just sitting in the damn garage. Can you imagine, like, stuff that thing in the wall at the big end? And I mean, Jesus. Right. Like, I, mean, I know they're safe vehicles, and you would probably be fine. But yeah. I sure as hell don't want to be sitting on a battery that catches on fire, and I have no way of getting out. Right, yeah, your door's jammed yeah. shut for whatever reason, and yeah, no thanks. Yeah, I will, I will pass. Another thing I saw was actually a 388,000 mile Mark IV Supra. It's all rusty. Selling. It's a 2JZ manual non target top car. Selling for $49,500, <laughs> which is more than a new one. Yeah. <laughs> what the hell? Yeah, the. Say, like the 90s car market is has gone officially insane. Mm -hmm. But if you think about it, it was like showing our age here. Like the cars from the 90s are the same age as the like 70s muscle cars of when we were in high school. Oh yeah. It's almost like our classic car. You know, like car. right. <laughs> oh so, god. Uh, yeah, <laughs> you know, and that's that's all we wanted, mm -hmm. right? It was like the early '70s muscle cars and stuff, and it just like our parents' generation just drove the prices up so high right. that we couldn't even touch them. <laughs> then we get the so we get I, the third gen Camaro and the Mustang too. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah. Like, damn it, we missed that one, man. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Really, uh, like, uh, like the, yeah, like you say, the Fox bodies mm -hmm. and like the G body stuff, yeah, was is really what we had our like actual opportunity on. Yep. All right, Adam, do you want to remind us all where we where we were at? Uh, my child had his friend over and his parents came to pick him up, so it was uh, an, an abandoned blockbuster <laughs> video away from a custody exchange. So I apologize. <laughs> yeah, we were just talking about that dude cruising around with the oh, VR yeah. stuff and kind of led into just where EV's at and just our opinions on good or bad, like just the yeah. initial, you know, yeah. initial up for a, well, a couple of things going on with that and say something I was doing my homework for this episode. Uh, EVs have tires wearing out in less than 10,000 miles and the customers are freaking out. And it's due to like the torque of the electric motor and just the insane weight of these vehicles. I don't feel like that gets talked about enough. Yeah, uh, funny you say that. I actually saw a couple videos where this cyber truck, like getting stuck in a couple inches of snow, mud, mm -hmm. like things getting buried 
uh, just because of the sheer weight of these things. They get, I mean, any off-camber stuff looks super sketchy. Um, and, I mean, these things are getting buried to the frame in mud because they just I think it was like seven, 8,000 pounds, right? You know, who knows? How... Right. And I, th I don't know if it was even like, I know some of them have like that special, like, I can't get stuck mentality in these things because they think that, you know, just it's EV. I mean, why it's the smartest thing in the world. How is it going to get stuck in anything? And it definitely gets stuck. Like, not impressed at all yeah. with the performance of that thing, at least from what I saw. And, you know, I mean, all, you know, I know they have the HV mm -hmm. uh, or the Hummer EV and, you know, stuff like that. Uh, not really too, too much info on that mm -hmm. one for myself, but I know like the Ford Lightning, the mileage on that, like they're claiming X miles, like, you know, the actual mileage does not match up to the oh, prescribed yeah. mileage. Not getting the advertised like, range. Like, well, advertised, yeah. Imagine driving to the lake, you know, hauling your camper or something, hauling your boat, and you get like a quarter of the way there and just right. having to pull over <sighs> and charge your shit because it's out of out of battery. <laughs> like, I mean, how embarrassing is that? You got this $100,000 truck on the side hey, of the road hey. and you can't go anywhere. Yeah, the yeah. Hummer EV at my old job we actually made prototype parts for that but mm -hmm. uh there's an old old job for a reason right so uh something goes wrong not my fault right. um i was just wondering like do you think that this is all causing like the plummet of these prices on these things like people are like the the demand uh, right really yeah i mean with the supply the used market is just getting flooded right and uh you know, people are waking up to the mm -hmm. fact that these things aren't what they were hoping they would be. And the brand new ones are sitting on the mm -hmm. lot, not getting purchased. And then, you know, it just supply and demand, right? Like the supply of the youth, people are getting rid of them before they get to right. the high dollar repairs or whatnot. And the people with more sense yeah. than money that would be the ones that would buy them used are like, no thanks. So the used values are just tanking on these right. things. I mean, and you know, Ford's had the pullback with like the lightning, like you said, and I don't know where mm -hmm. all this is going, but, uh, I still have no interest myself. Right. I mean, with all the other companies coming out too, mm -hmm. like you got Rivian, Lucid, you know, Tesla, Right. GM's doing something, I'm sure. I know that they, you know, just stopped all, like, they had, I guess I read something about where they had plans to put in some big plant, but then they put a halt to it. I think, Ford, or was it Ford that had that? One of, I know one of them yeah. put a halt and put the brakes to their... I, I think you're their right. I think it was Ford, Ford without, uh, you know, stopping and Googling. Yeah. Yeah. If we're wrong, don't worry Googling if we're wrong. It, somebody yeah. will come on and tell us. <laughs> right, yeah. Hopefully, I mean, get yeah. some engagement. Damn. Like, somebody make fun yeah. of us. Somebody tell us we're stupid. Yeah. Right. I mean, and then they'll come back to see the replies Crap. to their comment. That's we'll the... get another view. Right. Tell <laughs> tell your buddy, like, man, look at these two idiots out here talking about EV and yes. have no comment, like, no idea what the hell they're talking about. Yeah, right. bring your buddy over. Have you all have a watch party and everybody oh, comment on it. <laughs> <laughs> right. Screw the Super yeah. Bowl. Come look at these jackasses on yeah. this podcast. Oh, Bring your buddies gracious. over. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. Oh, man. Yeah, we have a, you don't claim to know everything. <laughs> so there are, you know, oh, yeah. those and things. There are that, these are all opinions, right? Opinions. I, uh, this is just our, our mindset at the time, I guess, right? <laughs> like, based on the knowledge I have at this yeah. moment in time, it could all, could all change tomorrow. <laughs> Yeah, right. <laughs> Depends what mood I'm in when I'm waking up. Oh, yeah. I know. We're, we're like someday we're gonna go oh, back and man. look on this stuff and be like, man, that was a garbage take. The podcaster's curse. <laughs> but we got yeah. it. Yeah, you gotta have them though. Hopefully, we're able to look back at them and with our <laughs> right you know, be monetized yeah. and all that fun stuff. Like, oh man, look at us back then. Yeah, as like we're wiping the, our yeah, noses the, the, the with the Woody bills. Meme. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, like, oh, I guess man. to your point, 
the whole uh, like wh- whistle and diesel's channel like it's just all like all of his money mm-hmm. and everything is just all based on based on hate that he brings to his channel right like he's made it made a yeah. career out of pissing people mm-hmm. off <laughs> so whatever right oh, yeah. like there's no such thing as bad attention yep and i have a friend that does marketing for facebook pages and instagrams and also for a well-known uh media outlet but she flat out said that like if you, and if you notice like in like in, uh, in this her post yeah there'll be like horrible grammar and misspellings and everything and when she asked her about it she's like yeah i do that on purpose like you know how much engagement i get <laughs> off missed grammar she's like it is insane she's like think about it i misspell yeah. uh, if i use your in the wrong context or there i get a thousand comments telling me that i'm an absolute idiot because nice. i use the wrong freaking context she's like right. drive that and drive right. the engagement up do what you got to do i don't care so it just blew my mind i'm like holy crap that is like almost genius like you're purposely misspelling words and purposely right. using horrible grammar but it's taking your engagement look at all the this social media advice <laughs> given on a podcast that gets like 50, 50 right. views a week <laughs> by the way we're also experts at that too oh man oh, oh. my god dude yeah. i'm telling you we're, that's hilarious that's funny. oh man <laughs> yeah it's like a one-stop yeah. shop man you just come here for advice on everything <laughs> when are we gonna start taking calls yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> welcome to the automotive misconduct, po- yeah. misconduct podcast oh god we help you today i'm not gonna be recommending any feminine products start giving out therapist yes. sessions and crap <laughs> oh wait, wait you offer those I need them. oh man Back on track. Here. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, okay. Yes. Off the ra- back on track. Back here. on the rails. <laughs> back to the check-in uh, question. <laughs> last story I wanted to talk about was, uh, oh. I guess, speaking of Ford, uh, they're actually looking to go direct sales to the consumer and skipping the whole dealer step, which is interesting. It could be. I I can't see how it wouldn't be more profitable for them. I mean, literally cutting out the middleman. Oh, yeah. And I guess Mm -hmm. depending on how they did it, it might be more, I don't know if I want preferable for the consumer, especially the average person. I can see that. But. I don't. I think dealers will always exist for used vehicles. I can't. Well, even the new stuff, because right. it's got to go. I mean, you have to take it to get work done. I mean, they'll have right. their warranty centers at the dealership, stuff like that. But and the used market, obviously. Hmm. I mean, personally, I mean, who loves walking out to a dealership and getting bombarded by eighty-seven <laughs> people on a golf cart yeah. chasing you down, trying to run you over? Yeah. <laughs> like, oh, gee, thanks, dude. Like. I think being able to skip out the dealer would be a awesome deal. Like if you, if, obviously you need to go to the dealership if you have questions or if you need advice on what you're looking for. Right. But, I mean, if you're dead set on what you want to buy, I mean, why wouldn't you just go mm-hmm. straight to the head and just be like, hey, this is what I want, order it. Yeah. And it comes it's um, delivered right to your house. Oh, e- yeah, for sure. That'd be cool. The dealer that I use in Frankenmuth is is always been. I guess fantastic to me uh so i have no no complaints there Mm -hmm. but just in general like and i've dealt with other dealers for other things and and whatnot and it can be just as slimy as their reputation proceeds so Mm -hmm. i guess kind of outside of that one like literally one outlier um yeah, I can't see it as, as right. being like a really much of a disadvantage for the actual consumer, other than like you said, being a, a service center and you know trade ins and you know flipping the used cars and, and what. So I, mm-hmm. I don't think that industry will ever go away, but it's definitely going to evol- evolve like everything else, right? And I can very yeah. easily see this being the next thing going ahead what a, 
what about like all like the specialty cars that have like astronomical above MSRP? Right. Like their dealer sticker stuff. Like, <clears throat> wondering what would do to that market? Because I mean, hell, some of these cars are coming out here double, yeah. you know, double MSRP. Like the a lot of the demon, you know, the mm-hmm. one set demon one seventy stuff. You know, so those things were all you know right. two hundred fifty thousand dollar cars, roughly. And you know, what would it do? What would it do to that? Like if they had like a you know a dealer or a spe- you know a special office production option, and the dealers would probably be pretty upset if they weren't able to right. make those. Right. Uh, well, in Ford was I saw was cr- cr- supposedly cracking down on that, and the way, like anything else, like you give somebody enough time, they find a way around it. Right. Like these dealers were mm-hmm. ordering cars in oh, yeah. in people's names, and then I turn around and flipping them and selling them as a used vehicle with like four miles on them for like the same price. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The same price, like, like the same unit. insane markup. Yeah. Like, well, all right, well I can't do it new. So I'll title yep. it in my sister's name or whoever. Right. Like I can see that being a thing. Right. My mom, my sister, yeah. my dog, you know, one step from the dog and turn around and, and sell it as a used car right. with say four, miles on it or 30 miles or, or whatever and getting the same price what do they care yeah i mean all you'd have to do is right. say you took it i mean it was a demo unit at that point i mean yeah say it was a demo unit and sell it as a demo unit so you know so you give do somebody enough time if any little loophole they'll figure it out they'll figure it out well it looks like yeah. we're doing pretty good time wise so uh we'll wrap this one up um you made it this far Thanks for listening. If you liked the episode, please like it. If you really liked it, please subscribe. And if you don't like it, comment and tell us why. All right. Yeah, we appreciate all feedback. All right, see you next week. Something. Thanks for watching.